Welcome to my channel. If you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Berkshire Hathaway stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Become a member and support the channel for 99 cents a month, or you can get a more in-depth valuation for $10 or $50. The highest level is $99 for a private Zoom session to discuss financial statements. See the link in the very top of the description. We are going to look at Berkshire's B shares, not the A shares, although the valuation will be the same regardless of which one we looked at. Berkshire wholly owns Geico, Duracell, Dairy Queen, Fruit of the Looms, and many more companies. It partially owns lots of companies as well. It owns 27% of Kraft Heinz, 18% of American Express, 10% of Wells Fargo, 9% of Coca-Cola, and many more businesses. The company is known for its control and leadership by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Berkshire is the eighth largest public company in the world. Let's get started with the model. Really big company, 504 billion market cap, and they're trading at 211 a share, and they have 2.4 billion shares outstanding. To get shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plan, and equipment. If a company has positive free cash flow, it could pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other businesses, or invest back into their business to grow it. This company has a lot of free cash flow, 20 billion, 34 billion, lots of extra cash remaining to work with. Net income is the profit and loss for the business. It's on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. You could also see their net income is also really strong, 24 billion to 81 billion, although it did drop in 2018. In 2018, it took a $3 billion loss from an impairment of intangible assets. That's a non-cash item and a $20.6 billion loss from a reduction in unrealized capital gains in the company's investment holdings. Both of these losses were non-cash items, so they didn't affect free cash flow. That's why free cash flow remained strong, but net income took a dip. The $3 billion impairment of intangible assets is most likely goodwill. Goodwill is when you acquire a company for more than it's worth. So say for instance, a company is worth a billion dollars. How do you know how much it's worth? Well, you take the assets minus the liabilities in the balance sheet. If assets are two billion and liabilities are one billion, the company's worth one billion. But if you pay 1.5 billion for the company, you have to book 500 million into goodwill. Then in future years, you look at the acquisition and decide, did I overpay or not? And if you felt you should have paid 1.4 billion, then you would take 100 million out of goodwill and book it onto the income statement as an expense. So it would bring down your net income, but it will be a non-cash expense. It's non-cash because the cash happened years ago when you acquired a company, not when you wrote down the goodwill. Their revenue looks really good. It grows from 223 billion to 327 billion. 2019 was a great year for this company. Their net profit margins are amazing. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. The higher your expenses, the lower your net income, the lower your net profit margin. This company did a great job converting its revenue into profit. They converted 25% of their revenue into profit. In prior years, they only converted 2%, 19%, and 11%. So that was a really good year. They're becoming a lot more efficient, a lot more healthy. They have $103 billion of debt and $424 billion of equity. They pay 3.83% interest on their debt and cost of debt is 3.05%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And 20% of their capital structure is debt, which means 80% is equity. Cost of equity is 8.54%. And we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. Part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta, 0.81. So the stock moves less than the market. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity. 
and their WAC is 7.47%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And the WAC is a discount rate companies use when they want to take on new projects. For example, if Berkshire had a new project and it cost $1 million upfront as an expense to take on a project, then they would estimate the future cash flows that project generates. Say for instance, that project generated $100,000 of cash flow each year for the next 20 years. What they would do is they would discount those 20 years of cash flows back to today to see the value. Say for instance, those 20 years of cash flows discounted back to today using the WAC was 1.5 million. Then they would take on a project because it cost 1 million and they would make $500,000. But if they discounted those cash flows back to today and it was $800,000, they would not take on a project because it cost a million and they'd be losing $200,000. And you only want to take on projects that add value to the company. And the WAC is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows for this model. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $504 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $469 billion. We divide that by 2.4 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 196. They're trading at 211, so they're trading at an 8% premium. So it is a sell according to the model, although it's really close. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at 171. Simply Wall Street uses the average analyst estimate to come up with their valuation. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. The stock dipped in March like most other stocks, but it's come almost back up to where its all-time high was. So this is a great company with a great future, so I don't think there's much risk here. But stock price is not necessarily based on how well a company's doing. It does help if a company's doing well financially, but the only indicator of stock price is supply and demand of the market. The more people that want to buy a stock, it will push the price higher and higher, even if the company is performing poorly. The more people that want to sell a stock, it will push the price lower and lower, even if the company is doing well. The market is forward looking. The hardest part of investing is understanding market sentiment and investor psychology. And if you can figure that out and how people think, you can do really well. Let's look at the ratios. Really good PE, the median for the entire market is 16.5, the average is 18.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 6.2, so investors are paying $6.20 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is really good also. The median for the market is 2.0, the average is 4.7. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.5, so investors are paying $1.50 for $1 revenue. Price to book is really good also. The median is 2.4, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.2, so investors are paying $1.20 for $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is really good. The median is 4.0, the average is 13.2. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're almost at 26. They can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's also called operating income on the income statement. Good ROE, the median is 12%, the average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 19%. So they provide a good value to the equity holders. I was unable to come up with a current ratio because it's difficult to understand what the current assets and current liabilities are for insurance companies on their balance sheet. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 8% premium. Their ratios look really, really good and their financials look awesome. And this is a great company with great leadership. Even though Charlie and Warren are old, I know they're gonna have successors that are gonna run the business as well as they do. Let me know what you think of the video, leave a comment, I reply to all comments, and if you wanna become a member of the channel, you can do that for as little as 99 cents, up to $99. Thanks for watching.